Hey guys, Chris from Provo Beast Audio Installation, and in today's video, we're installing a double DIN in this 2016 Ford Transit. Now, in this install, we're going to show you how to remove the factory radio. We'll head over to the bench and show you the parts that we're needing for the install, including the radio, dash kit, and harness adapters. We'll come back here to get everything reinstalled. Let's get started. Now, before we dive into things, a couple of things to note. Our trim on our vehicle doesn't have steering wheel volume controls. You may or may not have sync. Um, regardless, the install is still possible, even if you have the smallest display here as well. Now, what we'll do is link all the parts in the description based on your trim level in case you have one trim versus the other. In today's install, we're replacing this whole screen assembly area with a traditional doubled in, so the aftermarket kit will replace all this for us. Now, the first thing we need to do is get this radio on out. Now, always double check to ensure your CDs are out because once the radio is removed, it'll be nearly impossible to do that later. So we got a panel trim tool here. We need to start unsnapping trim pieces. Because we have the screen, there's gonna be these two screws here at the top, they're seven millimeters. We actually have to pop the display out of this cover um, and keep the display because the display runs a lot of the other electronics here. Uh, we'll just tuck the display back behind the radio. That's the only downside of this install is this, we have to keep this even though we're not using it. Now next here, there's gonna be two additional screws further down here. And that just unsnaps here. We're gonna go ahead and disconnect our harness, push in the little tab, swing the lock forward, and it comes out. So once that's out of the way here, now we're gonna have two final screws here in the center. We have quite a few clips, and a lot of these clips you have to push your, your panel tool in to relieve, to unsnap it. Next here, it's gonna expose two seven millimeters here on the front of the radio. Disconnect our harnesses. Okay, that's now out of the way. Now you're gonna have two more seven millimeters here on the front of the radio. Disconnect your harnesses off the radio here. Okay. So part of the kit preparation when we come back is we have to cut out this center support. The unfortunate side is once you cut it, it's gone and there's no more center support for an OEM radio. With everything un unsnapped and untethered here at this point of time, let's head over to the bench to show you the parts that we're gonna need for our install. All right, so here at the bench now, the parts that we're using for our install today, first and foremost, is the radio we, uh, customers chosen to put in. It's this Boss Audio wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto unit. Now to accommodate this doubled in in the factory location, we need the full doubled in kit. Now this kit comes with a ton of different components because we're basically totally converting that factory uh, radio area to accommodate a doubled in where before it didn't even have a doubled in whatsoever. Now the kit itself is the Metro 99 5835G and this specific kit will provide a new upper pocket, new dash bezel. Now from a wiring perspective, we need a couple of harnesses. Our main harness here is the Axis XSVI-5524-NAV. This allows us to install our new radio while keeping a lot of the factory systems. It provides a smart harness, 
um, and then anything that's controlled over data, it provides it for our radio. Well, additionally, though, we do need the Axis AXSWCHFD1. This will retain our factory backup camera. And then also, if you had steering wheel volume controls, which we don't in our install, but if you did have those, you'll need the Metro Axis ASWC1, um, and it plugs into this kit. We'll show you those parts. Um, and we can link them in the description. Finally here, we need an antenna adapter and we're going with this Metro 40-EU10. So those are our basic parts here. Uh, like mentioned before, we can link them all in the description along with different variations based on your trim level. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our harness adapter that came with our radio. And we're gonna grab the harness adapter that came with this Axis kit. Today we're gonna be soldering up our harness here. Now if you don't know how to solder, that's fine. Um, you can do buck connectors or crimp caps. Just don't use wire nuts or twists and tape. It's just not designed for an automotive application. All right, so what I've done here is I went ahead and grabbed our boss harness and our harness adapter from Access. And this would be your radio harness for whatever radio you're installing. We've stripped both ends here. And for the most part, it's going to be matching color for color. Now, it's not always the case. Sometimes a manufacturer on either side will change up a color that's generally standard in the industry. And if you just assume the colors match, you could cause damage to your head unit. So always double check the function of that wire before you assume that wire matches the corresponding color of the other side. And uh, we've already preloaded one of the harness sides here with some heat shrink. So as soon as that harness cools, we can shrink those tubes down and we'll loom our harness with some high temperature tested tape. All right, so we went ahead and soldered up all our colors here. Now it's about 99% that it's color for color. Our couple variations like the reverse gear trigger wire on this is a green purple where traditionally on aftermarket units for the most part it's purple white uh, vehicle speed sense is this uh, blue with a pink stripe but our aftermarket radio didn't support vehicle speed sense so we don't need to hook that one up we also added an extra power and ground we just teed it in now in the case that you have steering wheel volume controls that needs power and this secondary harness if in by chance your steering wheel volume control when you connect to your ASWC1 module here if you had it and it's not working there and you do the sync harness instead and you plug it into this end to program it does call for an extra power and ground here but again we don't have steering wheel volume controls we don't need it but if we did we'd want to make sure we power it so we just tap the red and the black and also snag power from this connection so just just be aware of that if you have steering wheel volume controls you do need to power it a lot of the time it doesn't work here. Um, you'll have to use this version of the plug um, on your sync harness to retain our backup camera and it also does your steering wheel volume controls. Um, it just needs power. So with that out of the way, at this time what we need to do is move those tubes over. We'll shrink them down with heat gun. Then we're gonna loom our harness with some high temperature tested tape. Next here, as for our secondary harness here, this will retain our factory backup camera. This end plugs into the camera input on the back of the radio. Now, this also has an option for a steering wheel control remote. It's either or, it's not both. If the harness on the radio is not programming correctly, you'd have to use, you plug in your ASWC one here and use this for steering wheel volume controls. Um, we'll make notes of that in the description. Um, it just depends on your trim. We don't have steering wheel volume control, so we actually cut our wire out, which is just gonna leave our backup camera harness. And it's just a T harness, because this will plug into the OEM screen, which runs that camera. And then this end will plug into the plug, so it just, um, it's in line. And this snags that signal from that screen, and it'll provide that signal to our aftermarket radio. So this is all this will do. We'll also loom this in high temperature test tape, but that takes care of that harness. Here's our radio harness. It's all nice and loomed up here. We also, like we mentioned, added an extra power and ground just in case we have to add another accessory or power a secondary camera. Um, because this puts out 10 amps on their accessory wire, we can add additional accessories to it, which is super nice. We just twisted that off. We'll add some um, terminating ends on there so it doesn't ground out anywhere in the dash. 
We could set this off to the side and now turn our attention over to assembling our dash kit. Uh, what we'll need to do is on our back plate that basically covers the top of the radio, we need to add on all our clips here. There's quite a few clips that are included within the kit itself. Um, once we do that, we also have to transfer over from the OEM bezel the hazard switch that'll go and pop into that location and then what we can do is mount our radio into the provided brackets using the hardware provided by the radio the difficult thing here is we need to uh, probably do put this in in and out a couple of times to just get the depth adjustment right so there's no gaps up and around the radio once the bezel is installed now this also does provide a single din kit which we don't need because we're doing a double din Lastly here, um, this kit comes pre-installed with an airbag light, which is super cool, ready to go. So this will just plug right on in, so we don't have to transfer any of that over because it's already pre-installed for you. So let's go ahead and transfer over our switches here, get our clips all assembled, and then we're going to get our brackets attached to the radio. All right, so for this top piece, these smaller three that are closer together on this side, we'll take these type of clips. So let's put those in. Next here, these two side clips, take these type of clips. All right, next here in the center, it's these style clips. Now these two right here, going back to these two kind of clips. Finally across the top here, it's these last three big clips. Now it does provide two short screws if you wanted to attach your vents to the bezel. We just use the OEM screws, which work just fine. But if you didn't have the OEM screws, you'd use these two screws to attach the vents. Last thing on this bezel, we need to add these clips now to this outer bezel area. Next here, it's time to prep, getting our radio attached to the brackets here. Now they're gonna be indicated which is left and which is right. Our boss radio came with hardware to mount up the radio. Um, so we're gonna grab that hardware and start mounting it up. Now we won't do it super, super tight yet, just cause we wanna double check the depth and distance to ensure that there's no gaps around the faceplate. Now one last thing here is if you have that factory screen and you're keeping the backup camera factory as well you need to pop this out of the bezel it basically just slides on out and we got to still put this back behind the radio unfortunately this runs um, a few of the data uh, bits in the vehicle so without this it may cause you some issues like the factory backup camera won't work steering wheel volume controls won't work the radio won't work properly We'll keep this plugged in, but we'll stash this behind the radio. This may not be the case in all circumstances, but in this case, we do need it. Additionally here, if your factory bezel does not have the airbag light, you have to put in the blink. If you do have the airbag light, you'll keep this here. One thing that we determined is if you plug in the harness that plugs into this airbag light, it's going to trip the light on the dash. And the reason is your OEM bezel looks like this doesn't it didn't have the airbag light on the dash at all um, so if we try to add one it's going to give us issues so the alternative is if you don't have that airbag light or it's putting a light on your dash when you plug it in what we're going to do is actually take this off we're going to pop this out and then there's a blank that's included with the kit that we'll put in its place that'll solve that issue so we're ready to head back to the car to get everything reinstalled we're back here in the car at this point of time we need to make that dash modification so we need to cut out this little inner support so our double den fits in this location you can use a variety of tools we have a multi-tool and we're just going to go right here at the edges to cut it out <laughs> Next here we can start fitting things in. So let's go ahead and grab our little camera T-harness. Snap it in. Snap it in. All right. And that'll just hang out back behind the dash. 
Got our, um, our antenna adapter all plugged in. Let's go ahead and grab our radio harness adapter and plug this in. We ran our Bluetooth mic. We just put it on top of the uh, steering column. So here, let's go ahead and grab our radio and make our radio connections. Okay, let's go ahead and do a test before we try to get everything buttoned up here. Now, with your first time boot up, the module itself has to program, so it may take a few minutes for the radio to turn on the very first time once you plug it in. So give it a minute, and uh, once it programs, it'll boot up the radio. All right, so the radio boots up here. Now, if you happen to have the steering wheel volume controls and you're retaining that with the new radio, and you have the ASWC1 module plugged into your harness adapter, what you'll need to do is program that once the radio boots up. Now, under the programming area of your ASWC1 instructions, you'll have to tap the volume up on the steering wheel repeatedly as it goes through a certain amount of flashes. Quit tapping and simply wait until the LED then goes solid. Uh, now you can test those buttons to make sure it's working properly. Again, you'll have to make sure you do this before you fully set everything up and you get the radio buttoned up in the dash. If you don't have steering wheel volume controls, this step isn't needed. All right, so we got the radio all in. It's a real tight fit. But we also went ahead and put in some two self-tapping screws at those anchor points there. Got the two seven millimeters in the factory location. So the radio is nice and solid. We notice our illumination wire or dimmer wire on our headlights going through the smart harness wasn't great. It wasn't holding. Um, and so we actually took our illumination orange wire, extended it and just tapped it, T-tapped it into this little harness here. And basically looking on the back of our harness, the one basically in the middle where we have a T-tap, it's only on when the uh, headlights are on. So we rerouted our illumination so it performs a little bit better. We also ran our USB down here. Um, we're gonna go ahead and dump it down here. Um, Outside of that, got our GPS mounted. We got our screen hooked up as well. And so now we just need to get you back on the tripod and take some time. We'll plug this back in. We didn't need to plug in our other harness. We just tucked it down there just because uh, um, we don't have the airbag light in that bezel. So we didn't want to plug that in. So at this point in time, we'll final reassembly. Alright, so we got everything all back in here. It's looking good. Now, I'll admit this kit's not perfect. Um, it, I, I mean, it doesn't sit super, super tight. Part of that is that screen has to sit back behind, and because of that, it may not allow this to sit super flush. So my recommendation is a short chassis doubled in, which we can uh, link one of those in the description. We spent some time to get this nice and tight and flush there it's looking good and we also added a flush mount usb which we can link one of those in the description popped out our power socket since we already have one right here and uh, put a usb there for the radio just fish our usb in the dash down to that pocket this comes up pretty easily it pops up and we have a video on how we did that uh, we can link that in the description in case you're interested uh, backup camera works great we kept it with that uh, sync harness there like I said, we put in our blink because our factory uh, radio bezel did not have the uh, airbag light. So because of that, we put in the blink here. If you do have the airbag light, keep this in and plug it in because we don't have the airbag light. If we plug it in, it uh, spawns the uh, airbag light on the dash. If you have any questions on what we did here, go ahead and post a comment below. Um, and uh, if you liked any of the parts that we use, we'll link those along with any other recommended parts in the description for you. Thanks again for watching. Be sure to hit the like button if you liked what you saw. And don't forget to subscribe. We post great content on the channel all the time. We will see you in the next video.